Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. In the last video, we talked about Open Relay and Anonymous Relay. We discussed how to set up Anonymous Relay in Exchange Server and how to relay emails from an application or a script using Anonymous Relay. In this particular video, we will be talking about Client Access Services. We will discuss what are client access services, how client applications connect to the mailboxes using client access services. We will configure auto discover and outlook anywhere in on premise exchange server. And we will publish our exchange services to the Internet so that users can access these services from external network. The client access services in exchange server works like a front door for the client applications. It accepts all the client connection requests and routes them to the correct mailbox database. There are multiple applications that can be used to access a mailbox. For example, Outlook client, OWA or Outlook on the web and mobile applications. All these applications use client access services in Exchange Server to connect to the mailboxes. There are other services as well. Those are dependent on client access services. For example, Auto Discover, FreeBusy Lookups, and Address Book. So if client access services are misconfigured in your Exchange Server, users will not be able to access their mailboxes, and all these services will not work. In prior versions of Exchange Server like Exchange 2010 or 2013, we used to install client access server role on a different server or on a different machine. But in Exchange Server 2016 and 2019, client access server role has been removed and its functionality has been combined with mailbox server role and now it is called client access services. Whenever users use client applications to access their mailboxes, these applications connect to the client access services and client access services proxy these requests to the backend server that is running on the mailbox server. Clients do not directly connect to the backend services. They always connect to the client access services and these requests are forwarded to the backend server by client access services. The protocol that is being used by a client determines the protocol that will be used by the client access services to proxy the request to the backend services that is running on the mailbox server. That means if client is using HTTP protocol, then same protocol will be used by the client access services to proxy that request. These are the client access services and client access methods in Exchange Server 2016 and 2019. Outlook on the web or OWA, Outlook clients, Exchange ActiveSync, IMAP or POP, Outlook Anywhere or RPC over HTTP, and MAPI over HTTP. Outlook on the web or OWA is the browser based application that is used to access a mailbox. Outlook Client is the most commonly used email application. Outlook Client is a desktop application that is used to access a mailbox. Outlook Client is also called a rich client because it provides more features as compared to Outlook on the web. ActiveSync is the protocol that is used by the mobile devices to access Exchange mailboxes. It is supported by a wide variety of devices operating systems. That includes Windows phones, iOS devices, and Android devices. IMAP and POP protocols are supported in Exchange 2019, but these services are disabled by default in Exchange Server. So if you want your users to configure their mailboxes using these protocols, you need to start these services on your mailbox server, and you need to configure the settings for IMAP and POP protocols. Outlook Anywhere was introduced in Exchange Server 2013. Outlook Anywhere is also called RPC over HTTP. RPC over HTTP is a Windows networking component that is used by the Outlook clients to connect to the Exchange mailboxes. 
Mappy over HTTP is a transport protocol that was introduced in Exchange Server 2013 SP1 and is still being used. We will talk about Mappy over HTTP and Outlook Anywhere in detail in one of the next videos. For now, just understand that these are the two features of Exchange Server. Those are used by the Outlook clients to access Exchange mailboxes. In one of the previous videos, we discussed how to configure internal and external URL for these virtual directories. But in that particular video, we didn't configure Outlook Anywhere and AutoDiscover. So let's configure AutoDiscover and Outlook Anywhere. To configure Outlook Anywhere, you will go to Servers, then click on Servers again and double click on your mailbox server. Then go to Outlook Anywhere. Under specify the external host name and internal host name, you need to mention the host name of your Exchange Server. We have already configured our Exchange Server virtual directories to mail.office365concepts.com. So similarly, we will configure Outlook Anywhere to the same URL that is mail.office365concepts.com. Under specify the authentication method for external clients to use when connecting to your organization, if you will click on this drop down, you will see three options basic, NTLM, and negotiate. We will discuss about these authentication methods in one of the next videos. For now, you can select negotiate and then click save. So, Outlook Anywhere is configured for your exchange organization. Next, we need to configure Auto Discover. We cannot configure Auto Discover virtual directory from GUI or from Exchange Admin Center. We need to configure it from Exchange Management Shell. So if you want to verify Auto Discover Virtual Directory properties, for that you can run get hyphen client access service pipe FL. Press enter. And this will list all the properties of Auto Discover Virtual Directory. Now here you can see auto discover service internal URI. This is set to exchange.office365concepts.com. So we need to change this URL to autodiscover.office365concepts.com. And for that we will run set hyphen client access service identity identity will be the host name of your mailbox server and then we will use switch auto discover service internal uri copy this value paste it here and instead of exchange type auto discover so that is auto discover dot office 365 concepts.com press enter And now let's verify. So this URL has been changed to autodiscover.office365concepts.com. Now we will go to local DNS, that is our domain controller, and go to DNS Manager. Under DNS Manager, under Forward Lookup Zones, here we will create one CNAME record for Autodiscover. Under alias name, we will type auto discover and this will be considered as autodiscover.office365concepts.com now we will point this autodiscover.office365concepts.com to mailbox server that is mail.office365concepts.com and press okay now if you want you can perform ns lookup and you can verify if this record is created properly so that is set Q equal C name auto discover dot office three six five concepts dot com press enter and this is resolving to mail dot office three six five concepts dot com. So we have created C name record that is for auto discover, but this record is created in our local DNS. So that means if any user will try to configure his Outlook profile from domain join machine or from internal network that query will be resolved from this particular DNS record. But if a user wants to configure his Outlook profile from external network or from non-domain joint machine, 
in that case we need to configure one cname record in our public dns so that auto discover service can be reachable from the internet so we will go to the dns management for the on premise domain that we are using in our on premise exchange server click on add here we will select cname and under name we will type auto discover under value we will type mail.office365concepts.com select ttl value to one hour and click add record so this dns record is created now let's verify this go to mx toolbox and here type autodiscover.office365concepts.com and this is resolving to mail.office365concepts.com when it comes to access a mailbox either using owa or outlook client or even a mobile phone users can either use internal network or they can access these applications from external network so as an administrator you need to make sure that these services are available and accessible from external network but if i will try to access these urls from outside the organization or from external network if for example if i try to access owa this is the external network i'm trying to access this url from host machine and i'm not able to access this url publishing external urls in your virtual directories is not enough to let your users to use these services from external network you need to make sure that port 80 and 443 is allowed in your exchange server and the traffic on these ports is allowed between the exchange server and internet so if i go to online port checker tool and let me check if port 80 is open on my network so it should say it is closed same 443 will be closed because i haven't enabled these two ports on my router so let me enable port forwarding on my router so let me create two rules and let's save these rules so these two ports are opened now now let's verify it again now it says 443 is open and let's check port 80 it is open as well let's try to access the same url now now you can see i am able to access owa from external network let's try to access another url let me close this let's try to open ecp or exchange admin center and i can access exchange admin center from external network as well so this is how you can publish your exchange services to internet so that users can access these services from external network in the next video we will be talking about auto discover we will discuss how auto discover works in on premise exchange server So that is all for now I will see you all in the next video thank you guys thank you for your time take care